So here's what the problem Yonix says is with these antennas. You're only wrapping the wire in one direction, either clockwise or counterclockwise. And remember, we have cosmic energy coming from the sun and we have earth energy coming from beneath us and that is what creates a harmonious electromagnetic field. Hey, I'm Amy from Following Hawks and if you've been anywhere on social media the last few months and if you're into gardening or houseplants then you have probably seen something about electroculture and in its basic form and on most of the videos that I have seen you wrap a piece of copper wire around a stick, put it in your soil, and watch your plants grow like crazy. I tried it myself. So does it work? And how does it work? Why does it work? I want to share a little bit about it with you today and share more about what I've learned as I've gone much deeper into the topic besides just the TikTok videos. So two elements have a huge impact on the growth of our plants, and that is golden energy from the sun that's spiraling down to the earth in a clockwise fashion. And as the earth receives that energy way down deep in its core, it spirals earth energy back out into the atmosphere. And if you think about it, you have the yellow rays of the sun mixing with the blue of our planet and the two of those together combined are green, like all of the plants and trees on the earth. And you'll see the spiraling energy reflected all over in nature in the Fibonacci sequence. So in a snail shell or uh, weather patterns, a sunflower, that's that spiraling energy that we see reflected all around us. Now, on top of that, our atmosphere is electrically charged. And that you can see in what's called the Schumann resonance, where there's a measure of the electromagnetic energy that's coming out of the Earth all of the time. That's created by lightning, and it's held in our atmosphere. And it's oftentimes referred to as the heartbeat of the Earth. And all of these energetic elements have an effect on plant growth and plant health. However, the atmosphere that we live in today is far from ideal between air pollution, water pollution, and non-native electromagnetic frequencies. All of these things are creating an environment where the plants just can't grow as abundantly as they might normally, or um, they don't put out as much produce or as nutrient dense produce, which obviously all has an effect on our health as well. So how can we overcome some of these effects to bathe our plants in the most pure and natural electromagnetic energy that the earth and the sun have to offer? Well, that happens through ions. And if you remember back to your high school science class, you might remember talking about positive and negative ions, which are simply atoms with an electrical charge. So when it comes to the earth, it's all full of positive ions in the soil, in the plants, and in the trees. Basically everything that's connected to the surface of the planet. Meanwhile, floating around in the atmosphere and in the clouds are negative ions. Because opposites attract, the positive and the negative ions are drawn together to interact. And when that happens, rain falls from the sky, there might be a lightning strike to a tree, and our atmosphere is full of these negative ions. Now, it's way more complicated than that, but for our purposes, we're just gonna keep it simple. Our plants want more of those negative ions that are floating around in the atmosphere. And in this case, negative is a good thing. So when we put metal wires into the soil, they become magnetized with the Earth's energy and they act like an antenna for those negative ions. In scientific studies, when plants are exposed to an increase in the Earth's magnetic field, plant growth can increase by as much as 30%. But the opposite is also true when plants are removed from or uh, the magnetic energy decreases, their health declines and they're more susceptible to pest attacks or diseases that they wouldn't be if they were strong, healthy plants. So what's one of the simplest ways to create an ion collecting antenna? 
wrap a piece of metal around a stick. So this is what we've seen. This is what people all over the world are doing after seeing it online. And I did it as well here in my greenhouse about a month or six weeks ago. And I can't say that it didn't work. I certainly noticed increased plant growth. Everything looked very vibrant and was putting on a lot of vegetative growth. But I felt like it was hit or miss as far as the plants went. And so I decided to do more research and see if I could learn more about why that would be. And I stumbled across a gentleman named Yannick Van Dorn. He's an agronomy engineer who has been teaching a series of lectures on YouTube all about electroculture. And these videos, these are in-depth classes. They are two plus hours a piece. And initially I was like, I'm not watching two hours of video at a time. But as it turns out, he seems to be the expert on the subject. So I have been devoting time to sitting down and watching these videos and I have learned a lot from Yannick. So here's what the problem Yannick says is with these antennas. You're only wrapping the wire in one direction, either clockwise or counterclockwise. And remember, we have cosmic energy coming from the sun and we have earth energy coming from beneath us and that is what creates a harmonious electromagnetic field. So when you only have one piece of wire and you're only wrapping it in one direction, you're only tapping the energy of one or the other, not both at the same time. And different plants have different requirements and every plant has different requirements at different times of the year. For instance, in the spring, we want our plants to be putting on a lot of vegetative growth. We want them to flower and fruit and do that as quickly and as productively as possible. But we don't want that happening in the fall when the plant should be dying back and putting all of its energy into its roots, in which case it needs a different type of energy in order to do that. So this doesn't not work. It just, there's a few things about it that could make it better. What this does do is create an atmospheric antenna. Every single piece of metal, no matter what it is, it doesn't have to be copper, acts as an energetic antenna. They're excellent conductors of electricity. So whether you stick a spiral or a straight piece of metal into the ground, you've created an antenna that is going to channel energy into the soil. It's going to act like an acupuncture needle and stimulate the soil. And the higher you can get your object off the ground, the more atmosphere that it has an opportunity to connect with, the more ions it can collect and pull down into your soil. Now, the reason why you see some people having amazing results and other people saying, I tried it and it didn't work, is that every single condition is different. So there are plants that are in poor soil or there's poor water or a lot of air pollution or a lot of EMF exposure. And if those plants are struggling and you do this, it's gonna help it. It's gonna bring a lot of energy down into the soil. If your plants are already pretty healthy and doing pretty well, you're not going to notice much of a difference because again, it's just collecting energy to put into your soil. So Yannick recommends two other methods that are equally simple, but might be more effective at helping your plants grow. The first one is called the Lakovsky coil, and that was popularized in the 1920s and 30s. And it's as simple as this, a piece of copper open at one end. Basically, electrons are collected in here, moving at the speed of light, energizing anything within this circle. Now, what's interesting that I read in another book called Seed of Knowledge, Stone of Plenty, the authors explain the research that they did at sacred sites in places all over the world and theorize that they were likely used to energize seeds or magnetize seeds before planting or to bathe an entire agricultural field in negative ions. This would help communities feed more people and avoid famine. But they explained how in the UK, many stone circles actually have an avenue of large standing stones that lead up to the circle, sometimes a mile or more long. And usually those avenues connect with water of some kind, moving water. And that's because water is full of negative ions. And so if you combine water with 
a line of standing stones that all have magnetic properties in them, so magnetite, dolomite, that type of thing, it would basically usher negative ions all the way up that lane until it got to the circle, the stone circle, which would then harness and hold and amplify that energy. So anything you would have placed in the stone circle would have been energized. So when I came across this Lakovsky coil, I thought, well, this is a similar theory because you need to point this towards the north uh, in whichever way you're going to put it in with your plants. And so that's going to draw the electromagnetic energy in. And then again, it's going to circle and concentrate and be held in this space, really, really magnifying and energizing anything that's in the middle of this. The outside of it is just neutral. It's not going to do one thing or another, but the inside is going to be super energized. Now, I just picked up this little package of 18 gauge copper to make mine at the hardware store. It was like $7, but I would say if I do it again, which I'm going to need some more. If it's a success, I would go with a thicker gauge. This was really hard to kind of um, manipulate into the size or the shape that I wanted because it's just a little too light and flexible, but hopefully it will work anyway. Yonick says you can use any uh, size. You can make these large or small. The opening uh, doesn't matter. And in fact, if you're fairly electromagnetically sensitive, you can probably sense and feel like where, in fact, I can feel the energy as I move it like this. So you can probably play around a little bit and feel for like, where should that opening be and how large should it be? This actually feels pretty good to me, but um, I can't control that because it's a little too light uh, of a wire. So you might go for a heavier gauge um, than 18 gauge if you do this yourself. And again, the only thing you need to remember is that when you place it in a pot or around a plant, um, just get the compass app out on your phone and find north, uh, actual geographic north. Um, and you just wanna point the opening in the direction of north. If you point it in any other direction, it won't work. So very, very simple thing to do for um, your plants. Obviously this is a lot easier to do around a tree or um, larger plants than uh, you know if you're trying to uh, energize your whole garden. And this is gonna help with things like frost and heat tolerance, seedling germination, increased resistance to pests and disease, as well as helping plants just with any kind of toxic environment that they might be bathed in. Yannick even says you can attach these to your beehives. Uh, just attach them to the south wall of the hive and pointing uh, down. And for the Lukowski coil, uh, copper is the metal that you want to work with. Now the other simple but slightly more complicated uh, method that you can use and would probably work over a larger garden area is called a Luigi Igina spiral. And this really works off of this idea but in a much more balanced fashion that allows for both cosmic energy and earth energy to work together in the same place. Now for this method, you're actually going to want to use aluminum and apparently copper works as well, but aluminum was the metal that Luigi worked with and what he preferred and he's the one that created it. So uh, the aluminum wire, same exact thing that you can get at the hardware store in the same place you can find the copper. And I had the same problem making these spirals as I did working with the copper. It's a little too lightweight. It worked, you can see, I got them together, but uh, they don't look anything like some of the nice ones I've seen online. So uh, you might wanna go with a thicker gauge that will hold its shape better. And I tried a few different methods to make these. None of them were a uh, perfect method, but I picked up these styrofoam cones uh, just at the craft store. And this is what I ultimately ended up just like wrapping uh, my wire around. So uh, I did one small to big and one big to small so that again, one is bringing energy down spiraling, the other is spiraling up. Uh, if you are already like a jewelry maker or you're good with working with wire, you can probably use little hand tools to make spirals and then just kind of pull them apart so that they're uh, in the cone shape. So you can see I have one that goes smaller to large and I have one that goes can you see? Larger to smaller. And so these, same as the other, just stick in the ground, no uh, wooden piece needed. Um, but now you have the balanced energy. And if you can create a way, I couldn't get mine to stick together, 
Um, if you can create a way to uh, have a shape like this, where you can wind from one end to the middle and back out, and then you have one large uh, piece of wire that kind of goes small to big to small, um, then that, that's perfect because that then uh, harmonizes the energy. But I ended up with two, and I'll just put them in the soil like this. Ultimately, what I've learned in the research that I've done so far is that this field allows for a lot of experimentation and creativity. So start out with a tried and true method from someone who's done the experiments and has had some success, and then move on and add your own flavor and spin and creativity to it and see if those tweaks make things uh, work better or not so that you know. So let me know down in the comments if you're experimenting with electroculture, what kind of results you've had, and what method you're gonna use this growing season. In the meanwhile, have a magical week, my friends.